You're tuned in to the Restaurant Rockstars Podcast. Powerful ideas to rock your restaurant. Here's your host, Roger Bodwin. Hey, Restaurant Rockstars. Welcome to the Rock Your Restaurant Podcast. Engaging topics that help restaurants build their brands, rock their profits, and deliver amazing guest experiences. Thanks, listeners, for tuning in. Now, this is a super fun business that's all driven by creativity and innovation. Everyone's heard that phrase, innovate or die. And really, staying ahead of the competition is the fun part. It's what gets us up in the morning. So today's guest has a really fast-growing franchise that um, is super innovative. It's on fire right now. It blends coffee with classic rock and roll, and it's called Classic Rock Coffee. So today's guest with me today is Brett Payne. Hey, Brett, how's it going, man? It's going great, Roger. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I'm really stoked to have you here, Brett. So why don't you tell me your story, man? How'd you get into this business? Yeah, well, first of all, um, I don't want to take credit for something that wasn't my idea. The The creator behind this uh, is my buddy, Kent Morrison. He's the founder of Classic Rock Coffee. This was his whole dream, and he's put all this together. I call him the Steve Jobs of coffee because of his level of creativity. He's, pretty, he's a pretty amazing guy. But um, I connected with Kent um, in kind of an odd situation. I used to run a software company, so it had nothing to do with restaurants. I just know how to run business. And uh, Kent and I ran into one another. He had this great concept here in our hometown of Springfield, Missouri. And we sat down and he said, I really want to take this uh, outside of Springfield. We want to franchise. That's the whole idea. Can you uh, come on with me and help me do that? And uh, we created a really great friendship and worked hard together. And that happened about uh, three and a half years ago or so. And so that's how I ended up into the uh, into the restaurant business. You know, that's that's so, well, you've said so many things that strike a chord with me. First, Steve Jobs, one of my all time heroes. So I can totally picture, <laughs> you know, you know what your partner's uh, M.O. is and how he approaches yeah. business. And it's really cool how you blend your business skills with that whole that whole thing. And I can see where, you know, it's just going to rock and roll. And it already is because you're franchised. You're around the world. You're you're going global here. Yeah. So that is just that is just cool. So, you know, it's an awesome concept. I'm a huge classic rock fan. Obviously, you are, too. Um, I love the design of the stores and your website and the music that plays, and it just draws you in, and it makes you feel like you're there even when you're just on the website. So totally cool. Um, tell me about some of the biggest challenges that you've already overcome and some of the ones that you're facing. Well, I, I mean, honestly, I think one of the big challenges that we had early on was the number of inquiries that we had outside of kind of the perimeter where we thought we were going to franchise. We're in Springfield, Missouri, in the middle of the United States. Yes. We really thought that our stores were going to end up in St. Louis, Kansas City, Tulsa, maybe as far as Dallas. But as soon as we started really marketing, the inquiries and phone calls and everything else that you can imagine came in from everywhere. And so um, one of the challenges that we had was how do we take this concept that's very American-based, as you can imagine, totally, um, and then how do we appropriate that in um, in Nigeria? How do we how do we get that to work in Bangladesh? How about in Budapest, Hungary? How about in the Middle East? Um, and so that was one of the challenges that we had because obviously, if you franchise, it's easy when it's three and a half hours away, and you can send over trainers and that that kind of thing. But the logistics. Yes. of trying to take the culture of who we are as well as keep the product at a prime level everywhere in the world has been really a, a, the great challenge, but we've been reasonably successful at, uh, at doing that. There are so many challenges going through my head right now, and where do you begin, right? So one, you talked about cultural differences around yeah. countries. So do you sort of massage the concept at all, or is it just classic rock coffee, what works in Missouri works in Bangladesh? Tell me about that. No, we very much massage it. So we have obviously some non-negotiables, the, yeah. the look and feel of the store. I sure. mean, obviously, when you look at any kind of concept, you want to make sure that you walk into, if a customer walks into McDonald's, whether it's in Springfield or it's in Moscow, they know they're in McDonald's. It's, it's the same kind of thinking. Yeah. So the trusting, the lighting, the colors, the menus, yes. all that kind of thing. The thing that we're flexible on um, is really the food, uh, which is interesting for you because- okay, sure. uh, yeah, yeah. So the, the food, uh, for instance, our number one seller 
in terms of food in the U.S. is a, is a breakfast sandwich called a war pig. Well, the war pig doesn't work really well in the Middle East for reasons you can very much understand. So yes. we have to adjust those kinds of things. Uh, but overseas, we give a lot more flexibility on the food menu. The thing that we don't change is the look and feel and then also the coffee. So we want to be known as a high-end coffee house. We always have traditional coffees, lattes, protein shakes, and smoothies. Um, and then we are, we're a little bit flexible on the, the, uh, the food. The other thing I would say is you know, we have our own radio station, so we've got about 40,000 songs in our library. Our playlist is about 3,600 songs any given, any given moment. We broadcast that into all of our stores. Um, and one of the challenges that we've had in some of the places in the Middle East is obviously there are laws that prohibit some types of uh, music like that. So we have to make some kinds of adjustments. But as long as we can do that with the franchisee and still hold on to the concept and still have a great product, then we're... We're solid. So you're working with international attorneys and local experts, right? That kind of pull all this together. We have lots of attorneys and lots of, you know, people <laughs> thinking through all these processes and yeah. there's always challenges. But for us, you know, the the notion is not about the location where we put the stores. It's about finding the right owners. That's the main thing. We're very relational. As long as we have the right people, it's going to work everywhere. So let's go back to that topic because it sounded like you got just overwhelmed and, and it's such a hot concept and so many people yeah. wanted to be a part of it. So how, what's, the, um, what's the process to evaluate like who's really capable and who's just totally going to rock this thing versus you know, those people that say, oh, that's kind of cool. I'd like to do that. You know? Yeah, that's great because I'd say probably 95% of the people who contact us, Roger, are they have no concept of what it takes to run an operation like this. Yes. We get we we get a lot of what we call tire kickers. They're mm -hmm. just they're mad at their boss, they want to get out of their career, they're something has gone on. Absolutely. And so the first kind of phase of evaluation that we do with them is really just conversation like this. I just want to know their story, like why are they getting into this and try to figure out what what's the motivation? Um, are they really into it to run a business? Do they get our DNA? Um, can we build a relationship on this? I mean, obviously there's some systems and procedures and things like that. Are they teachable? Um, or do they have their own agenda? And there's a lot of franchisees, potential franchisees, they do. They get an, they see a concept, they like it, but they want to adjust it to their own thing. Mm -hmm. That's always a red flag yes. because we don't want to have that kind of contention. Um, no. The kind of folks that we want to work with are, you know, they've got some business acumen, obviously. They, uh, if they come to us and they say, well, I really don't love coffee and I only love opera music, that's a red flag also. And we have had that sure. kind of uh, interaction before. So Seriously. Just, just trying to go through that, uh, that understanding of who the people are, as long as they're teachable, they have some business acumen, we can teach them how to do coffee. You don't have to know, know coffee. Um, and as long as they can come into this place and they look around and they go, yeah, I can see myself really engaging in this concept. Mm -hmm. um, the test for us is after a day's work, Roger, most of us don't, uh, we're not in a rush to leave. It's not that we don't want to go see our families, but we go home and see our families and our families say, hey, can we go to Classic Art Coffee? Because it's a cool place to be. Yes. And uh, that's the kind of franchise, franchisees that we're looking for is people who share that kind of uh, love for this, this concept. Awesome, Brett. Okay, let's talk about the coffee. Tell me everything. Tell you everything. Mm. So um, the main thing about our coffee that we try to communicate is that it is ethically sourced. So that means we are able to trace our coffees all the way back to the farmer uh, himself. Um, so we know who is producing this coffee for us. We work with a great company called Cafe Imports. And we source our coffees really from a couple key places around the world. The main signature coffees that we have, and they're all branded rock and roll. Yes. Um, they uh, we have one called Breakfast in America. It's a Brazilian coffee. It's I got love a little it. bit of a little bit of a chocolatey flavor to it. We've got great logos for all these things, obviously that are all trademarked as totally. well. So yeah, yeah. everything's rock and roll. Everything's very cool. Um, we've got a coffee from Ethiopia that. Uh, it's called Barracuda Bite. It's got some fruity flavors in it. It's mm -hmm. honestly one of my favorite coffees because people often think we flavor our coffee, and we don't. It's how we source our, our green coffee beans, where they come from, the plants that those coffees are grown next to. And, and with coffee plants, it's interesting that wherever they, whatever kind of plant they grow next to, they tend to take on the attributes of those other plants. 
So our, um, our Barracuda Bite right now, it has a little bit of a, a blueberry flavor to it. And people ask us all the time, did you put blueberry flavoring in here? And the answer is no. It just mm -hmm. happened to grow near those kinds of plants. So we've got a, a Living After Midnight. It's a Sumatra, a little bit more of a tobacco-y taste in that. And then we've got a, uh, our fourth signature coffee is called Back in Black. It's from Guatemala. It's going to be a little bit of a caramelized brown sugar flavor, a little bit of citrus notes in it. Um, but the cool thing is I can talk about these things all the time. Yeah. When someone comes into our, our store, they see these coffees available. Uh, they can try different ones. Um, they tend to have an affinity towards one or one or the other. And that's not talking about the, the lattes or, or the, anything like that. That's just our signature, our signature drip coffees. It's, it's a very kind of expansive menu that we have with coffee. Mm -hmm. And you're open three day parts a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and people come in all the time. The whole thing. We're open yeah. 6 a.m. Yeah. until 10 during the week. And then on the weekends, if you can imagine, we're open till midnight. And uh, people ask, why in the world would a coffee shop stay, stay open till midnight? Uh, but the weekends uh, here are different because, and the evenings are different. It's dark outside. We have amazing lighting inside. It's very rock and roll. It's packed during yeah. the weekends. Yeah. People playing games with their families, hanging out, going to the movies, coming over here. So it's really a destination. Super awesome concept. That is great. It's on fire. So you also have a food menu. You mentioned um, you have the War Pig, which is really, really popular here in the States. Yeah. Um, you've got smoothies and lattes and all kinds of other things. What other types of foods are you serving right now besides the pastries? you have other things? We do. So, yeah, our, our main menus uh, besides the coffee are going to be the the fresh fruit smoothies the protein shakes mm -hmm. um, we have a really extraordinary protein shake menu and the reason is not because we just want to add something on we have been in, we've been setting up protein shake bars and health clubs for about 12 years we have over 300 locations so that's really something we're strong in we introduce that into the the uh, the coffee house as well because one of the things that we say is you don't have to love coffee to love classic rock coffee, this is and that's true. really true. So there's lots of options available. Yes. The quick serve food that we have is going to be obviously the breakfast sandwiches. We do wraps, uh, we do sandwiches, and we do some soups and things like that in the winter as well. So, but we try to keep the food menu reasonably small because we don't want big kitchens. We don't um, hire chefs necessarily. It's difficult to kind of keep that training yeah, and course. prep going on in a coffee house. Yes. Um, and then also it has to be something accessible through a drive through So that's mm -hmm. pretty much where our food menu lands. Got it. So are you introducing a younger generation to classic rock? Because I know my kids <laughs> were eight and 10 years old. They're listening to Taylor Swift and all that new stuff that I just don't get into. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, it's funny because I often tell people it doesn't matter if you're if you're nine or if you're 75. If Hotel California comes on, you kind of know what it is. Yes. You yes. might not know what it is, but um, the 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 notion of classic rock music is you know it's an interesting thing that it runs all the way from kind of the early 60s through the mid 90s. So. You can be listening in our store from anything from Elvis to Red Hot Chili Peppers on the next the next song, and there's this wide range of music that it kind of encompasses. Yes, of course. Um, so we get a lot of kids in here, teenagers in here. They all love it. They all connect with it. But then you've got an older generation that loves it too, um, which lends to the biggest question that we can't really answer, which is what is your demographic? It's so wide. Oh, man. Um, but the thing that ties it together is the music. That's the thin line that ties all of our customers together. It's not coffee. It's not protein shakes. It's not the food. It is the music. And that's why it's so important uh, to us. And uh, people seem to love it. I would call that a universal draw. And that gives you every advantage. That is just, yeah. that is just awesome. You're not niched at all. You're not limited. It's like it's got such mass appeal. That's beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. I can see and, why it's been so popular with potential people that want to get involved. Yeah, from all over the world. Yeah. I mean, that's the interesting thing is we probably get uh, more inquiries from outside of the United States mm -hmm. and inside, which is an odd thing. But, uh, you know, it wasn't a bunch of people sitting around a boardroom that looked at a bunch of metrics to decide what is the perfect hybrid with coffee that's going to work. Um, it literally was Kent Morrison, my buddy, who is... Uh, he, he has lots of big dreams and he's very creative and he's a t-shirt and jeans guy. 
and he just happens to love Led Zeppelin. And so he said, if we're going to do coffee, let's do it around something cool. And that's For how sure. we started. Well, that makes perfect sense to me. So you also have live music in your Missouri location in Springfield. It's called The Club, and you've had some pretty headlining acts playing. Why don't you tell me about that? Yeah, so we have um, an additional space next to us because we are a headquarters. Not only do we have the coffee house, but we have this big distribution center for all this stuff that has to go out. And then we have an area called The Club, which is about a... Uh, a three thousand square foot area, big stage, huge screen, all the all the stuff that you can imagine. So, um, we have had uh, we've had a lot of comedians from New York City that are traveling through, and we we have a a, a pretty strong connection with um, our local classic rock uh, station, um, which is a um, I think it's it's a Clear Channel station. I just forgot what kind of station it is, but yes. they we're, we're uh, we we have national acts that um, that tend to come through here from time to time. So we get comedy shows. Obviously, we get rock bands that come through here. I think in terms of like national headline shows, it's more of a regional thing. To be honest with you, Roger, we have a standing show that happens every Thursday night called Blues and Brews, which we have top blues bands in the country actually that are from here. They play every Thursday night, and it's ridiculously good. It's some of the best music you would ever hear. Um, and they happen to live in Springfield, and so we kind of give this to them as their practice time. But it's a big show. It's every single week. And then we typically have um, uh, uh, other shows on Fridays and Saturdays of local bands. Um, but again, very, very good. Uh, and we've had all, all kinds of genres in that. So, yeah, it's been terrific. So obviously you need a lot of extra space to have a club. Now, are other yeah. franchisees interested in, you know, doing the club concept in their stores? Is it yeah. possible? I mean, that's a whole nother animal unto itself because another profit yeah. center, but think about managing bands, bringing in acts, doing all that kind of stuff in addition to running a business. But what a great way to augment that concept, you know? That that is a terrific question. I'll tell you, it's one of the things that we're excited about to have here in Springfield. Um, but at the same time, when we talk to people about the franchise, it's really about the coffee business. That's enough. Yes, uh, totally. to kind of keep you very very busy. The problem that we have is that when franchisees come in or they see different images and things like that, they naturally kind of gravitate to this other building that we call the club, and they go, "Oh, I think I want one of those." And uh, then you can, we have I to have the discussion. See it. Yep. Yeah, we have to talk to them about exactly what you just mentioned is that, okay, to have the club, that's a lot of extra square footage, that's a lot of cost. Do you, can you support that on, on coffee tickets, mm -hmm. uh, which probably the answer is no. And not only that, it really needs somebody to do event management. It's yep. a bunch totally. of work to try to track down bands and run audio and video, and it is a, it is a big pain in the neck sometimes. So we have it here because of our location, like I said, we're kind of, um, because we're in a warehouse district, because we're the, the distribution center for the concept, uh, our square footage is reasonably inexpensive. So it's easy for us to do. Um, but most places, if somebody comes to us from Austin or Memphis or Cleveland or somewhere like that, and they say, well, I want to do this, uh, this club uh, activity as well, we generally try to say, let's not do that now. Yes. Let's focus in on the coffee mm -hmm. business. You're not sure exactly what you're going to get into with that. So let's work through that first. And then if we want to add that later, you certainly can. Well, this whole conversation really makes me miss the business because for 20 plus years, I had this rocking and rolling place and we had rock bands all weekend. And I was sort of the, the promoter and the agent. And I brought in the bands and just managed the club and it became this huge additional profit center. So I'm sort of reliving my past experiences through what you're telling me. But that's totally cool. <laughs> so let's talk music. I mean, we've we've thrown out a lot of really cool names like Breakfast in America and Back in Black and yeah. War Pig and all this stuff. And it's like my gears are just turning like, whoa, you know, I'm into all those songs and all those bands. How about you? What's your favorite, you know, well, what's your favorite band? I, you got a favorite song? Yeah, I mean, everybody that knows me knows I'm a huge U2 fan. Okay. Uh, yep. So, I mean, I, I used to, for many years of my life, I used to have this, uh, this funny notion that when I was sitting in a coffee house anywhere in the country and I heard U2, I always told whoever I was sitting with, Something good's about to happen. Anytime you mix coffee and U2. Really? And oddly enough, I ended up here. But uh, yeah, I'm a huge U2 fan. I, I love Dave Matthews. Um, I love all the classics, obviously. 
we have, as I mentioned before, a lot of Led Zeppelin around here, a lot of Stones, a lot of Pink Floyd. Um, very classic kind of, it's just fun. It's fun music. It's very enjoyable. Um, uh, I, I, actually, we just found out this past week that Kiss is coming to town, so I think we have 10th row tickets to go see Kiss here Fantastic. in Springfield, Missouri. If you can, if you can imagine in Springfield, Missouri, yes. but, uh, yeah. yeah, all of it, all of it's terrific and, uh, and we love it. Well, that's, that's terrific. I wouldn't be surprised if Gene Simmons doesn't drop by, you know? Well, that would be uh, that would be yeah that would be great right. if that happened. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that would be great. Well, I'll tell you another guy who we love, yeah. and most people don't know. I won't say most people don't know, but a lot of people don't know his name. We mentioned to mention him, but uh, we're huge fans of Joe Bonamassa. If you know Joe Bonamassa, he's a um, uh, one of the best guitar players that we've uh, that we've ever heard, and he's he's absolutely amazing. But uh, we've got a lot of Joe Bonamassa stuff around here as well. Very, very cool. So it sounds like you got a lot of balls in the air, Brett. Any other projects going on? Well, besides Classic Rock Coffee, I had mentioned that we, um, we have, uh, we have our, our protein shake business. It's called Shake This. We put that in health clubs all over the country. It's only in the United States. It's not a franchise. They're license deals. That keeps another department yes. very, very busy. It's a growing business. We put out about 25,000 pounds of protein a month out of our place. Awesome. Um, we also have a, um, a wholesale coffee business because we have our roasting center here. So not only do we roast for Classic Rock Coffee, but if there are restaurants or hotels or things like that that want really superior coffee, we have a brand called Contender Coffee, and we wholesale that coffee in lots of different locations. Um, and then we have an online um, uh, supplement business called CKN, which are the supplements that are also proprietary to us. So, yeah, we have, as you said, a lot of balls in the air. We have a lot of things going on around here. That There's, there's absolute truth to that. But it's all complementary to the concept, which is great. Everything. That's everything. Fantastic. Yeah, everything, everything works together. It's all in the same offices, the same people. Uh, just different revenue streams, different different channels of business that we can explore. So listeners out there, I know a lot of you who are in the business now, maybe out of the business, maybe looking for a hot new concept. If you are, you can look up this man through Classic Rock Coffee online. What's the best way if someone's interested in getting involved in your concept, Brett? It's really easy. They just, uh, as you mentioned, you can go to ClassicRockCoffee.com or our franchise website is ClassicRockCoffeeFranchise.com. You can't miss me. If you go to the website, you'll see me pop up on the bottom. You'll see an info form at the top. Um, I'm pretty much everywhere on that website. I'm the director of franchising, so anybody who's interested, they end up talking with me. Um, we're, we're not going to sift them off to somebody else, right. um, and I'll have a real conversation with them and see if it works. That is so awesome. So I learned so much about your concept today. Again, it's on fire. It is so cool. Brett, thanks for joining me today in the podcast. I'm sure listeners got a lot out of this, and I know I did. Thank you, Roger. It's been an absolute pleasure. Well, that was the Rock Your Restaurant podcast. Thanks, listeners, for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. For listening to the Restaurant Rockstars podcast. For lots of great resources, head over to restaurantrockstars.com. And while you're there, download a copy of the book, Rock Your Restaurant. It's a game changer. See you next time.